Welcome. My name is Paul Barber. I'm the Weapons Division Chief of the Small Arms Facility at the Anderson Army Depot. Today we're going to show you some programs we're currently overhauling for the month of March. We're going to tell you a little bit about the facilities we overhaul those in. Our facility here is about 83,000 square feet. Everything's self-contained under one roof. We have a complete machine shop, welding, painting, cleaning, blasting, plating, and a live indoor function firing range. Now, some of the parts I want to show you this morning are reclaimed parts. Reclaimed parts save the taxpayer a lot of money. It also keeps the weapon prices down. This is a barrel from an M4 carbine. When it comes in from the field, you can see it's in need of uh, overhauling. The protection is starting to rust. We gauge this barrel for serviceability once it passes the required gauging requirement. Then we take it, we clean the part. We get all the dirt, grease, grime, and debris off. We take it to our blasting department where we put a steel shot blast media on this barrel. We take it down to pristine steel. Once we take the metal down to pristine steel, it goes to our plating department where we put a new coat of manganese phosphate on the barrel. This is the protection. Top coat is oil. Comes out in a like new condition. These are just some of the other parts that we have reclaimed on the various weapon systems. Okay, today we're going to show you some of the weapon systems that we're currently overhauling. This is a M249 saw. That's a squad automatic weapon. It shoots a 5.56 bandolier as well as a 30 round standard magazine. The rate of fire for this weapon is 700 to 900 rounds per minute. As you can see, one of my artisans is getting a M249 saw ready to go to the indoor firing range. He's doing final assembly, final checks. Once it passes the final assembly, final checks and gauging, weapons will be loaded onto a rack and transported to the indoor firing range for function fire and function testing. Another one of the weapon systems we're working with today is the M4 carbine. At this station, my artisan is doing some gauging to determine the serviceability on an upper receiver for an M4 rifle. This upper receiver has been cleaned. It's been stripped of all the old anodizing. Once we strip all the old, old anodizing, the artisan has to gauge it for serviceability. If it passes the gauging requirement for serviceability, we reapply a new coat of anodizing, and then we build the assembly up into an end item. At this table, this is a complete assembled M4 carbine. It fires a standard 30 round magazine, 5.56 caliber. Rate of fire on this weapon, seven to 900 rounds a minute. You can clearly see the artisan doing a function check where he is cycling dummy rounds through the weapon. He is now checking for double fire. Once the weapon passes, all final inspection gauging requirements. It is placed onto a rack. This rack is specifically made for our small arms facility. It holds 50 weapons. From there, that rack is transported to the indoor firing pit where we actually do function fire and target and accuracy. Our indoor range has two 100 meter tunnels. To qualify these weapons, they qualify with 10 rounds. The shot group has to be under five inches. One of the other weapon systems we're currently overhauling today is the M250 caliber. Very popular weapon. You can see some of the sub-assemblies being built today. At this particular station, we have taken a reclaimed top cover. We have sent it through our cleaning, blasting, and plating department. It has come back in like new condition. 
our artisan is actually building that top cover up into a top cover assembly, which will be later applied to the weapon on our assembly line. Now, one of the things we use at Anastonormy Depot, each station has digital work requirements in the M2. As you can notice on the screen, we have the work package pulled up. It's the top cover work package that's associated with the work going on in the work section. The artisan can pull this digital work instruction up. They completely disassemble it and assemble it. You can actually put the animation in motion and it will show you all the steps it takes to build this along with all the MRP, mandatory replacement parts, and the depot maintenance work requirement work packages for reference. It's just another quality way that we go to produce a quality product to the soldiers in the field. I've laid out some assemblies. These were all started out as a sub-assembly, built up two assemblies, and these assemblies will actually go into the bare bone receiver to make the complete end item. Like I say, over 60% of these parts are reclaimed. Once the end item is complete, it shows up as an M2A1. So the weapons come in as an old M2 flex. They leave out a modified M2A1. The biggest difference between the flex and the M2A1 is the barrel. On the M2 flex, it took two soldiers up, up to five minutes to change the barrel out. Once you change the barrel out, then you have to achieve headspace and timing. With the new modification that began roughly six years ago, the new modification has a quick change barrel. It also has fixed headspace and timing. So now the soldier, all he has to do is ratchet it out, slide another barrel in, ratchet down, lock, load, fire. So we go from three to five minutes down to 20 seconds. We're going to take a look at our assembly station. Here we have what we call the bare bone receiver with no assemblies or any part attached to it. It's already gone through inspection, machining, cleaning, blasting, and plating. And now it's ready for all the sub assemblies you've seen prior to be assembled into the weapon to make the end item. Now, one other thing that's neat that we do here at Aniston, we also preserve a little history on the M2. So some of these receivers are brand new. Others are 75 years old. It's fairly easy to tell which ones are 75 years old just by looking at who makes it. This particular receiver is made by Kelsey Hayes Will Company out of Plymouth, Michigan. If you do the history search on it, you'll notice Kelsey Hayes made M2s for just a few years during World War II in the early 40s. This receiver is made by Frigidaire. Again, Frigidaire wasn't making receivers, uh, refrigerators, it was actually making M2 receivers during the war. So it's not unusual to see weapons from Kelsey Hayes come in, Frigidaire, Singer Sewer Machine, AC Spark Plug. We have a lot of those still out in the field today. Those are all World War II relics. Now, as the receiver goes down the line to build station number one, you will notice the artisan installing the barrel support onto the receiver. Once we have the barrel support installed, it will come over to station number two. Station number two, more of those sub-assemblies get applied to that receiver. We have the front sight cover, the front sight blade. We have the side plate. We have the cam. So the receiver is starting to take shape of an M250 caliber machine gun. Next station is station number three. At station number three, we're adding more of those parts. This is 
where the top cover gets installed, the bolt latch. So this is one of the top covers you've seen, my artisan assembly on the assembly section. This is where it gets installed. From there, the weapons go to station number four. At station number four, this is also final assembly. This is where the artisans achieve the fixed head space and timing so the soldier in the field does not have to. They use a series of master gauges to achieve that. They also go through all their final checks and gauges to ensure serviceability and a quality build. Once they have achieved head space and timing, and the weapon is ready to be fired. It actually goes on the exerciser. What this exerciser does, it cycles the weapon 700 times. We call it the break-in period. Once it cycles this weapon 700 times, the artisan will put it back on station number four where they'll re-double check all the tolerances to make sure nothing has changed. I'll show you how this machine works. I also want to note, we are the DOD's primary repair facility for small arms weapons. After the mechanic double checks all the tolerances to make sure nothing has changed, he takes the weapon, places it onto the rack. From there, the weapons go to the indoor firing range where they go through a series of function fire tests. After the weapons are function fired, they go to the cleaning line, this conveyor system, where they actually fill strip all the weapons down, run it through a cleaning cycle, put a heavy coat of oil, then it goes through final inspection. Once it passes final inspection, it goes to shipping, from there it goes to DLA, and then DLA distributes to the soldier in the field. Thank you, Commander Army Depot.